All right, so at this point, I've done this pre-flight check of all of my files. I've gone to the HTML, the CSS, the JavaScript, looked through them all, cut out things that I don't need, and, and all of that, just to be a little efficient. And I've also looked at the folder, the project folder, and checked what I need, what I don't. Remember, then, that this is just one aspect of the project in the WW folder. If I back up outside of the WW folder, we've got that config.xml file. We'll do one more pre-flight check on that one. It's back up to the root level of our project outside of WWW. And let's edit that config file in Notepad. What we could do here, again, uh, I'm going to recommend, uh, again, we're going to most likely on Thursday see about uploading our, our app for real to an app store. So if you want to go through the whole process, you're going to need a unique app. You're going to need a unique app ID. This is the most important thing. Everything else can be exactly the same, I suppose, but this is what has to be different. Line two. If everyone's been copying my work this whole time, everyone's got the exact same app. So here now I recommend, even if you copy my work in the future, make sure that this is different. So line two here, uh, change that to your own last name right there. And this doesn't have to be a real website that exists. This is just something that delineates it as your version of the app. Speaking of version, right next to it then, we've got uh, a version code number. This last time we looked at this was a month ago, just about. So I'm going to put there 8, and I simply, because the way it looks, I'm going to put 0808. You can put 09, of course. doesn't matter. Android version code, we'll leave that as 1. That one's going to increment every time we upload a version of the project to to the App Store. Version could change. Android version code must change. We'll see how that looks like once we, uh, once we get to that point, when we do a version 2, mo some, most likely sometime next week. Everything else, you can change any of this if you want. Um, so you can do that at some point. Let me use maybe the same thing I've got in my author, in my author uh, block. Besides that, well, we don't really need to change anything else where we've got our splash screen and our icons. Yes, we have all of, the, all of this bit of redundant code that's not uh, really necessary where it talks about, oh, add your, your, your iPad icon and all of that. We could take all of that out. We won't because uh, we've been focusing on Android the whole time, but Sometime next week, or maybe a little later, well, next week's the last week, isn't it? Sometime next week, definitely, we're going to um, talk then about uh, how do we get this project to all the devices. So we, wanna, we don't want to remove this because we will be targeting all the devices. Right now we're focused on Android. So I save my config file. I'm going to close all my files. I'm done with everything. I'm at MVP. Yes, there's still much more we could do with the project, but we're at minimum viable product. Minimum viable product. I've made the project work. It saves classes. It retrieves them, deletes them. It does all of that. I can go from screen to screen. There's no broken links. There's no um, uh, empty screens and all of that. So the next thing we need to do then is talk about creating a release version of our project. Every time now that we've been doing Taco Build Android, it's been creating the debug version. It's been creating a testing version. The app stores will not accept a testing version of your project. We need to create the release-ready version 
and then upload that. It takes a few steps, so I've got a new handout for you. If you go to the network folder, handout 8. Copy handout 8 to your flash drive or desktop, and you can print it later. To copy handout number 8, I'll go over it in general, then we'll do it together. We'll create the release ready version of our project and what all of that means. I'm going to copy that handout then. And open it up. Signing your final APK. When your app is complete, you must sign it with your developer certificate before publishing. The actual type of file that we've been creating and we will need to submit to the app stores is a .apk file, an Android package file. In order for us to create the final version, we need to sign it as a developer. The cool thing about Android is that we can create a self-signed certificate meaning that we are, the, uh, we are the authority that says this certificate shows that I'm a real developer. So over on the Android side, I can call myself an Android developer, and I am an Android developer very easily. Over on the iPhone side, iOS, I have to go through Apple and pay to get this developer certificate for them to vouch you're a real developer. And that's about $99 per year. On the Android side, we type a line of code, and we've got it. We still have to pay for something a little later when we get to that. But we need to create this developer certificate, which shows that, thi that this is our app. We are who we say we are. We are this developer. We'll go through this process in just a moment. And what will happen is we will create a file, something.jks, JavaScript keystore. We we're going to create a file that basically is our is our ID, our our, our password, our, our our skeleton key that shows we are a developer. This is our app. It's very important that if you're doing this for real, that you save this file and never lose it, and you make a backup of it, and you make a backup of the backup, because if you're doing this for real, and you release your app. And then later you want to release a version 2. You have to use the same JKS file to say, this is my app, this is the new version of it. If you lose that JKS file, it's gone. There's no way to bring it back if you lost it. This is randomly generated fingerprint. You cannot recreate the same fingerprint. And so therefore, okay, you'll have to create a brand new JKS file and start again. And the version of the app that was out there might not be updatable anymore because you're not the developer officially anymore. You lost your JKS file. This is just for Android. This JKS file only works for Android. And then we will need a different one for Apple devices and a different one for Windows devices. So we'll get to that in a moment. Here's what we actually need to do then. Uh, you should be in your command prompt. Uh, I'm going to... I've got my command prompt where my project is at. I'm in my project in the command prompt. I actually want to cd dot dot. I want to back up out of my project. You have to figure out where you want to put this, is what I'm saying. We're going to save the JKS file. I'm going to save it actually just right on my F drive. So I'm going to cd space dash dot dot to back up to the root level of my flash drive. You can lose anywhere you want, but don't lose that JKS file. I'm going to put it on the, on the root level of my F drive to back up out. Remember, cd to change directory space dot dot. That takes you out one directory. Then according to my handout, I have to type this long command here in one line. Key tool. One word. Space dash gen key. We're gonna generate a key. Space dash v verbosely, meaning give me back, give me a lot of feedback as it's happening. Space dash key store. What's the name of our key store file? Space your last name. 
Jks. This can be anything you want. But it's going to be your last name. Now, for the purposes of the class, you can completely make this up. You can put John Doe. Perfectly fine. When we then go to create an app store, uh, an app store developer account, you can make that up completely as well. Or you can do all of this for real as if you're going to publish a real, real app. We will be publishing an app that anyone can download, but you can make up all of this, no problem. If we were over on the iPhone side, we'd have to have all of this totally real and honest, or we're going to get rejected. On the Android store, everyone comes in. So I'm making this up completely. Space dash alias. A particular key store file can have multiple developers in the file. So everyone's got their own key to sign an app. It's an alias. It's an individual key on the key ring. The key ring is the key store file. Just like here, I've got way too many keys on this keychain. The whole keychain is the JKS file. This one key to open this one room is the alias. So most likely for yourself, it's just your last name again. Now if you're making this up completely like I am, make a note of it. I know I'm going to forget this, so I'm going to write this down because I'm going to need to access this stuff very soon, more than once. So who's the particular developer in this key ring, the JKS file? Space dash key alg. What's the algorithm? What's the way that we're encoding this space in caps RSA? We're using RSA encryption. Space key size dash key size. Uh, what's the size of the hash? Whatever it is. 2048, so two kilobytes. Space dash validity. 10,000 days. 10,000 days. The units are days. This key store is valid. 10,000 days, I think, is 30 years. Our key here is valid for like 20 or 30 years, whatever that comes out to be. The Google, the Google Android documentation over at developer.android.com, where I'm getting this from, of course, says you need to have a legitimate key store file that's set to at least 25 years. So whatever that is, that's at least 25 years. So, uh, for whatever reason, Android wants developers that will claim to be making apps for the next 30 years. I guess that's what that means. So that's the validity of our key store. We're vouching that we're going to be a developer for 10,000 days. Double check everything is spelled correctly. If it's not, it'll give you an error and you just try again. Press enter. It's going to process things, and it's going to ask for a password twice. My handout here first, it's saying, it's going to ask for a password to unlock the JKS file. This can be whatever you want. It won't show you what you wrote, so make sure you know what you wrote. Type that in, press enter. You're going to have a chance to re enter it, so hopefully you'll type it properly twice. If you didn't, it'll tell you. Then we're going to fill in all of these fields regarding okay, who are you as a developer? The first one, what's your first and last name? This can be again completely made up. John Smith, the third. Then you press enter after each one. What is the name of your organizational unit? That's the fancy name of what's your job title. And say developer. App developer, Android developer, whatever you want. The title in your organization, then what's your organization? What am I calling this one? J Smith Apps or something, whatever. It doesn't really need to match what your config XML file 
says, but it most likely should. And since I'm making this up completely, it doesn't matter at all. For the purposes of our class, but for real, if you were really going to publish a real app, a real app, this should be real. Name of your city or locality, San Diego, state, California, two-letter country code, U.S. If you're developing your apps from another country, you need to look up what the two-letter country code is, U.S. In the next line, double check that everything has been written properly. Here's my name, organizational unit, organization, locality, state, country, CN, complete name. Okay, so then. Uh, here it says, is this correct? If you, if you just press enter, it assumes you mean no, and it will then have you do it again. This is correct. I've seen it. Everything seems to be correct. I'm going to do yes before I press enter. These JKS files are cumbersome to deal with if you need to make any changes. So you want to make sure that you've typed everything properly. If you want to change your password, that's a little cumbersome. You have to look up the command, type it in perfectly, and it'll let you change your, your password. So you want to make sure all of this is correct at this point. Type, type yes, and then press enter. It'll then process. It'll then ask you for another password. This is going to be the password of the actual alias, because remember, we've got one key in a key ring, and each one needs a password. For full security, this could be a different password. For convenience, I'm going to make it the same password that I used for the key store file. And eventually say storing your JKS file. I created this unique developer's fingerprint, this file, if I go look at my flash drive, right there. That is what vouches, that's what you use to vouch as an app, as an Android app developer. We would do something similar-ish for uh, iPhone publication and Windows publication, all of that. You need some sort of developer certificate. Here is how you create it then with our Android tools. If this were a real uh, app that I really wanted to sell or give away, that's a very, very, very important file that I would make a backup of a backup of a backup of. Did everyone get that JKS file? So that was the first section of, of this handout. Now that you have your JKS file stored in a safe place, you will need to use this in all your future apps. It validates you as the creator of your apps. Make a backup, then make a backup of the backup. To use it, we have here one simple command. Jumping down before we do it to line three, we're going to type a taco command, but then we have to reference the key store, and we have to type a path to the file, the, G the JKS file. So I'm saying then since we're going to need to type where that JKS file is, hopefully you've got it in a location where you can type its path easily. If you saved your JKS file to the desktop of this computer, your path is something like C colon backslash 
users backslash lab backslash desktop backslash your file .jks. It may or may not be that depending on the, your computer. So I have my JKS file on the root level of my F drive, so my path in theory should be very easy. If, uh, if you don't have it on your USB, you're going to have to type a, a long path. Or to possibly make it easier, you can put your JKS file on the C drive, put it on the root letter, the root directory of the C drive, and then the path will be super easy there. C colon backslash myfile.jks. My handout then says, okay. We'll refer to it to make it easier, put it on the C drive, in command prompt, in your apps folder. So I'm going to go back to command prompt and CD into my project. CD apps and then CD my SDCE 16.08.09. So if, if that, if changing those directories is tricky, remember, just shift right click the folder. Uh, so I'm back in my directory of my project. All this time I've been doing uh, taco uh, build Android or taco run Android or taco emulate Android. Uh, here my handout is saying we'll, we'll do taco Build Android space dash dash release two dashes very important dash dash release we're gonna re we're gonna create the release ready version of our project the final one that it's not deep it's not debugging version this will be compressed it'll be ready to go space dash dash with nothing space dash dash key store so yes the the typing here. Hopefully it makes sense in the handout, but as I as I type it here, notice how that is dash dash release space dash dash nothing space dash dash key store equals here's our path to my key store. Mine is on my F drive, so F colon backslash whatever you called your JKS file. Space then we've got dash dash alias, which developer in that key store is the one that's signing for this project. Whatever you wrote. At this point, I don't know what you wrote. If you followed my handout exactly, well, follow my handout exactly. When we press enter in a moment, it'll ask for a password twice. One password is for the key store file, then the second time will be for the alias. I use this, I personally use the same password for both. So it's just one thing. If you use the different password for each one, you need to use the different passwords. Press enter. This build should be pretty much the same as always, but then it will pop up. It'll give us a simple pop-up that says, enter your password. So it looks like it's behaving as it usually does, but then I get enter password, enter key store password. So whatever your password was for the key store, enter it, click OK, and then it pops up again right away. It says enter key password, enter your alias password, it should say. But that's your alias, enter on that. If any of those are wrong, it'll tell you, and the build will fail. And it'll proceed as usual.
when that finishes, eventually uh, we will have an APK file that has been signed, that has been compressed, encrypted, and it's ready to be released to the app stores, to the Android app stores. Eventually then I get build successful and it says what it built was the following APK. In this folder that we'll open in a moment we get android-release.apk. It's the final version, the app store ready version of our app. That folder is in my project folder from the root level where I see the config file. From the root level of my project, if I open Platforms, Android, Build, Outputs, and it's in the handout of course, Outputs, APK, right there, Android Release APK. 759. The other ones that I've been working on all day long previously is the debug version. Android debug APK from 6 o'clock, debug unaligned from 6 o'clock, release unaligned, debug report, whatever. So this this is it. One point one and a quarter size megabyte of a of a project. Our whole project has been compressed down to this one file. In my handout I, I say your final APK is right here. Move it or copy it to your desktop or wherever else and change it, change its name. I'm gonna copy it from my from that folder. I'm gonna back up all the way to the top on my flash drive to the to the top level of apps I guess and I'll paste it right there. And I'll call it my SDCE one. That is the first version of my SDCE APK file, the finished version. I guess in my handout I'm also saying dash release. Uh, this is the release ready version of my APK. It's final, I could call it. My app final, whatever. I'm putting number one because that's also related to the Android version code. In the config file, remember we've got Android version code, and that one has to, unique, has to be a unique whole number. So this is the first version, of the final version of my, uh, of my project. And congratulations, you have a release-ready version of your app to distribute to the app stores. We're going to talk about that, of course. But um, this is then the procedure of taking all the hard work that we've done on all the previous days, weeks, and uh, compiling it down to the final Android version we will address for iPhone and Windows and all of that a little later. But I've got then the final version of my project. I'll take questions in a moment. Then we're going to shift gears to start to talk about we need to create then a developer's account over to actually publish our app. So any general questions at this point? What's that? OK, let's take a quick look there. That might have to do with. Uh,
If you, if you have it on the desktop, you don't even have to reference uh, it in the folder, so you can delete the whole folder, but let's just leave it right here. to be key from
change the name so it to be like STC one dot apk. Oh, okay. that's the final version of that. Gotcha. Oh, that's good. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? Okay, so that's the So we're seeing then that the um, the command is not very forgiving. We have to make sure we type it in exactly as it's supposed to be because it expects the exact command. And uh, mine worked and then I saved my APK file somewhere handy. Uh, we're going to shift gears now to go create the developers accounts at the app stores and then we will upload our project and actually have real uh, real people could see it again this is all how you want to decide to do this for real or optional or not I'm use I'm gonna use fake names and such it, it'll work just fine or you can use real names so I've got my APK file on my F drive